Hey, 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 what's going on guys and gals? In this particular video, we're going to be talking about using OBS with the X32. I've been getting a lot of emails asking how to do it. I'm going to be real upfront with you. I've never used OBS before. I downloaded it yesterday, watched a few videos, and uh, learned how to do a few things. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to show you in OBS is the filters. Uh, if you hit the little plus sign here, that's how you can actually add these. Now, you see right down here the BST2. Apparently, when you load this program, it will search your folders on your computer if you have any BST plugins there, which with Reaper, I do. So I'm going to be using one of my uh, meters here. And I've got a limiter on here, uh, which came with OBS set at a negative 0 0.10. And the compressor I have turned off. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you here is also on the monitoring. Or um, I apologize. Uh, here we do have the uh, Behringer X Live card, which is our channel 1 and 2. And we're going to say OK. And where is it at? There was something else here. Uh, advanced, maybe, I think. Right here, guys. Audio monitoring. Now, if I set this to on, okay, monitor and output, then as I'm playing, uh, when we get ready to jump over to Reaper, you're going to hear that, and I don't want to shout over top of the audio. So I'm going to turn this off for right now. Okay. But I am using earbuds to mix this, so you might want to put some in, okay? So let's go ahead and jump over to Reaper. Okay, now David, this is how you do the virtual sound check. Uh, this is set up uh, the routing matrix inside of Reaper. I've got uh, 13 tracks. Uh, it's coming in channel 1, going out channel 1. Coming in track 1, going out track 1. Uh, however you want to see it, if you look up here to the right. Uh, I am connected to the ASIO with my driver. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. I've got it looped right here. That's what this button does. That's what this one does for. And then we're going to jump over into X32 edit. Okay. And here we are in X32 edit. Now guys, the first thing I want to show you here is the, the way that I've laid this out for this particular video. I've simply clicked on edit. Okay, I'm on the first screen here, 1 through 32. I click on edit. And when you click and unclick uh, these, if you watch over here to the right, this is how you put it in. And this is how you take it out. Now, if I want to put a space in there, I'll hit blank and then put it in. And as you can see, uh, there is a space there now in between the two right here. Okay, so we don't need that. So let's go ahead and take that off. And... Uh, if, guys, you can't break this. All I have to do is click this right here, uh, initialize bank, and it'll put this right back to the way it was from the factory. But we don't want to do that. Okay? So let's go up and look at some routing. Now, on my inputs, because I am using the card, and I've only got 13 tracks, the first eight inputs, as you can see, were under inputs, source. Okay? The first eight are going to come through the card. Now, the uh, other five that I need, I'm going to use user in, 9 through 16. Okay, when we go to user in, as you can see right here, 9 through 16, when I click on this, normally these would be off. Okay, but I need these tracks coming in from the card. And then you, when you look down here and see the local 14, 15, and 16, that's because right here under local, 9 through 16, okay? As you can see, it's telling me the card is coming all the way in through 13. Again, these would be off. And we're just going to go local 14, 15, and 16. And that's it for the user in. Now, on the card, when you set this up, okay, uh, the source, the output, we're going to use user out for one through eight. The reason being, 
whether you're using Zoom, vMix, Skype, uh, anything that's asking for inputs 1 and 2, this is the card out 1 and 2 right there under user outs. Okay? So now when we go to user outs, right there it is. So I'm going to send everything to Mixbus 1 and 2. And that's what this is right here. You can use any mix bus that you want. Okay. And that's going to be determined right here. Now we've got 16 of them. As you can see, if I come up here now, oh, I apologize. Let me come down here. See, that's the main left and right because that's our bus. Okay. That's the main, the, the main left and right is a bus. All right, but we don't want to do that. We're going to come right back up here since I've got everything set up to one and two. And there's our mix bus one and two. Okay. Now, this is where the user in, user out patching comes in, guys. Right here, if I come back over to the card under one through eight. Okay. Let's look at our card again. User out one through eight. We can now come up here and assign these right back to our card. Normally, again, these would be off. For me, the easiest thing is start right down here at the bottom, guys, because you can get these off a click, okay? And then it's not gonna give you the results that you're looking for. And there we are, okay? And that's it for the routing. So, we come over to the bus, there's my stream left and right. As you can see, I do have them linked. Okay, now if you see a little clipping going on right there, it's, it's close, but it is not clipping. If we come over here now, the, the, number one, guys, name them first. Okay, so if I come over here to the right and click on this, and then we look at this mix, you'll see that it is just about identical to my front of house mix. Okay. So I'm doing this, like I said, with the earbuds to what I think sounds good. Now, the last thing that I've done is if we come up here, we're going to pull up here. Uh, we're going to pull up this stereo fair compressor. Now, people will say use limiters. I don't like that. Okay. And, and there's a reason for this. Everybody says they can't get enough volume to the stream. Well, what's happening with the limiter is it's measuring the peaks okay these are not rms meters these are peak meters so if we see it looking like it's clipping a little bit right there and a little bit right over here when we come up here and look at our meters as you can see now okay the the mains are running much hotter than this bus now i am over here at unity and going back to the meter style Okay, it, I would prefer RMS meters, uh, root mean squared, which would give you the overall average of the audio signal. We don't have that, so we're going to work around that. Okay, so I've got as strong as a signal as I can get going out of this now. So now let's go ahead and jump back over to OBS. Okay, guys, and here we are back at OBS. So I'm going to come up here and we're just going to listen to a little bit of the audio. Uh, where did we find that before? I believe it was under advanced audio properties. Monitor and output. Away from home, my love has never gone astray. Okay, so we can hear that no problem. So let's go ahead and bring up that VST meter we were talking about earlier. Okay, and here we are. So right now I've got it set to RMS. And that's the level that I'm shooting for. If you remember, uh, I've talked about this before, the AES recommends between a negative 16 and negative 20 LOFs, which is loudness unit full scale. Okay, so if I come over here and I put this on peak, you'll see what our peak meter is reading. 
okay? So that peak meter really is just telling me that I'm not clipping. It doesn't matter what the meter down here says, okay? I'm using the meters that I have in my doll and the meters that I have in the X32. So knowing that, I'm going to switch this back over uh, to the RMS standard, and that's what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is uh, hit Start Streaming. I'm going to unmute this. We're going to let it play for about a minute, okay? And then I'm going to download uh, that video, and we're going to run it through our OBS meter. Now, just as an example, if we bring that up now, okay, and then we turn it on, and let me come over here and unmute this. Okay, guys, and that's what we're going to get. So I'm going to unmute this, and then I'm going to hit start streaming. Okay. Be your faithful love till the day my weary bones lay down. And now you're gone, and oh, time can move so slow. Okay guys, so now I'm going to go up and uh, wait for this to finish processing on YouTube. And uh, we'll get back to the video. Okay guys, here's the video right here, loaded up. Uh, this is what I downloaded off of my YouTube channel. We have a loudness of negative uh, 16.8. Okay, that is Luffs right there, even though it says the K. It's just a different side of the pond. Our loudness range is a 3.8. Our reconstructive peak is a negative 4.4, and we have zero clips. Okay? So uh, let's jump over to X32 edit, like I said, and, and we'll start from the beginning there. It's the same thing that I always say, guys. This is all going to depend on you paying very close attention to your input levels. Okay, so over here... It really doesn't matter which channel I go to, guys. I'm trying to keep these inputs and outputs pretty close together. Okay? Now, as I've said before on the percussions, you can go a little bit higher than the negative 18. As you can see right there, I'm pretty well peaking around maybe a negative 12, getting close to a negative 10. And it's boosted right here. Okay? If we come over here and look at our compressor, uh, the makeup gain, it's its not really taking it because if I take it up here, guys, if I boost it here, I cannot boost it right here, okay? As you can see, it just immediately puts it into the clip. So we want to keep those signals kind of as close as we can get them. Uh, maybe a little extra oomph, but as you can see, we're nowhere close to peaking right there, okay? And it just doesn't matter. Uh, as we go over where we come to, these are going to be pretty well close to each other. Okay? Remember, guys, this is makeup game. It is not called boosting game. Okay? This is very, very important. All right? Uh, steel guitar, same way. You can see as it's sitting down there, it'll start coming in. Okay? And uh, look at the adjustments on my board here. Look at my fader position up here. Nothing, absolutely nothing outside of that 5 dB range. Okay, and the only effects we have on it is right here. Uh, my output gain is a negative 5. I'm using this to set over here, this meter right here. Okay, and uh, the input gain here is a negative 11. This is what is actually going to make this compressor kick in the threshold, guys. Just like with mastering a CD or mastering a song, okay? The reason I've got it set around that negative three B, uh, dBs or lower is all I'm trying to do is to compress the transients, okay? And this is coming off of the percussions. 
That's what I'm trying to get here. I'm just trying to pull those transients down. So more of the, the meat, the full body of this audio is going through. Okay. So I hope this has helped. I hope that you've seen some, uh, or maybe gained some, uh, insight from this. Number one thing, guys, set up your proper input levels, then go through on your channel processing. Okay. I, I cannot just encourage you enough to do this. I hope it's helped. Take care. God bless. And we are out of here.